Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. I'm Brett Scholl. Today we're going to talk about the Les Paul versus the Strat. I was originally a Les Paul guy. My first electric guitar was a black Les Paul. Uh, they called it a fretless wonder. And then I bought a white Les Paul after that. But I've always been a Les Paul guy. I love the way they play. I own this one and I own the Strat too. But... Rhett is kind of a Strat guy, even though he plays a lot of different guitars. Yeah, my first guitar was a Strat. It was a cheap little $99 department store Strat knockoff. But they kind of hold a special place in my heart because of that. So I've owned a Les Paul, which I no longer own. I sold it for something else, which tells you how I feel about Les Pauls. One of the reasons I like a Les Paul is because of the pickup configuration. Typically, Les Pauls have humbuckers on them, or mini humbuckers, or P90s. Mm. Which are, they're all large pickups as opposed to the small pickups that you find, the single coil pickups on a Strat. Yeah, single coils, a Strat. The thing I like about the Strat pickup configuration is the three single coils. I personally find it to be a little bit more versatile than a double humbucker design like a Les Paul. Um, and it has a incredibly unique tone that you can get with the five way switch here on the two and four positions, the quacky Strat tone. That out of phase tone. Out of phase Strat tone that everybody loves. Now one of the things about the Strat is that it's very common actually to have a humbucker in the bridge position. It became more common in the 80s right. you see guitars and I've owned many guitars and there are many types of Strat guitars that have humbuckers in the bridge but really the traditional Strat sound is with the three single coils. Right. So I guess the point of today's video is maybe you are new to guitar and you're thinking about getting your first electric guitar and you can't decide between the Strat or the Les Paul. Or the Strat style. Right, Strat style, S style, or Les Paul style. So today we're gonna to take you through a couple of the differences and similarities between them to help you decide. Okay, let's talk about the pickups, Strat. So Stratocasters traditionally come with a three single coil design which are switched with a five way blade switch. I like this pickup configuration because I find it to be pretty versatile and the Strat has been used on a ton of iconic guitar recordings. <laughs> that strat tone it helps to have the three single coil design like this les pauls typically come with two paf pickups and i'm talking about les paul customs les paul standards but you can also get a les paul deluxe that comes with mini humbuckers or you can find older les pauls that have p90s the difference in the pickup configuration will actually change the sound quite a bit but not as much as going from a les paul to a single coil Strat sound. Right. In in terms of electric guitar tonal spectrum, these two instruments are about as far apart as you can get from one another. On the Strat side, these tend to be brighter. Uh, they tend to cut through a mix a little bit better. They have lower output, meaning they're not as loud as humbuckers are, which makes them really useful in genres like traditional country or funk or you know some modern pop um, rock players like i.e. John Mayer is a huge Strat guy so Les Pauls when you think of that you think it's That is really the sound. The Les Paul is the sound of rock. They have a lot of mid-range because of the pickup configuration. Because of the body style, you get a lot of sustain. They're really the standard rock guitar. Okay, next we're going to talk about body. Now, one thing to think about when you're playing a Les Paul or Strat is the cutaway. A Les Paul is a single cutaway. You can also get a Les Paul Junior that will have a double cutaway, but the traditional Les Paul is a single cutaway it's a little bit difficult to reach up here into the higher frets than a Strat. I will admit that. Right. Because on the back of the neck where the neck joins the body on a Les Paul, traditionally that is a really thick piece of wood that for people with smaller hands, it can be tough to physically wrap your entire hand around the body and neck together. 
The body shape of the Strat is a tr your traditional double cutaway design, and you do have much easier access to the higher frets here. The thing I don't like about playing a Strat high up is the shape of the neck pocket back here, this joint being a hard 90 degree angle. It really just that corner pokes you right in the palm of the hand when you're playing. Whereas a Les Ball has a more contoured joint where the neck meets the body. Other differences are in body construction and so other differences in body and other differences in body construction are what type of You ever do this all the time okay. every day Other differences in body construction are in terms of wood Traditionally Les Pauls are mahogany body mahogany neck with a maple cap sort of brightens up the tone. Traditionally, strats or fenders, Telecasters, Stratocasters, are made of either alder wood or swamp ash. Early examples are made of pine, early Telecasters. I'm not sure if they ever did any pine strats, but uh, traditionally, an off-the-wall fender, modern fender like this strat today is made from alder, which is a you know pretty easy to find wood kind of sits somewhere in the middle of the tonal spectrum. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, um, and they are lighter than Les Pauls. That is really true. This Les Paul here is probably about nine and a half pounds or so, I would say, whereas the Fender is how much you think? This is probably seven, mid sevens. That may not seem like a lot to you, but when you wear a Les Paul for a three hour gig, your back is hurting. When I typically play a Les Paul, I sit down nowadays. Yeah. In fact, that was one of the main reasons I sold my Les Paul was on gigs, you're playing for two hours, three hours at a time. It literally was causing me some serious neck and shoulder and back pain, and I'm not nearly as old as he is. But even though I own both guitars, I look much cooler when I'm playing a Les Paul. I guess that's true. I guess cer certain people have, like, you know, certain guitars look better on some people than others. Next, let's talk about the neck. Okay, so neck construction, we touched on it earlier, but the Fender is what you call a bolt neck design, whereas the Les Paul is a set neck. No you, bolts. No bolts. These are two fundamentally different ways of building a guitar. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. These are cheaper to manufacture, which means traditionally strats are less expensive than Les Pauls. These are much more difficult to swap the neck out. Right. <laughs> With this, literally, if you didn't like the way the neck felt on your Les Paul, you could order a neck from a company like Warmoth or All Parts that's a different shape, maybe a different wood, a different fretboard wood, and literally just bolt it right on yourself. And probably the next time you see me playing this strat in a video, I've ordered a new neck, so you will see it on there. Right. Um, Neck shape really varies between each guitar. G different generations of Strats and Les Pauls have different neck shapes. You know, late 50s, early 60s Les Pauls tend to have really beefy baseball bat necks, where as Gibson went through the 60s, those necks started to slim out. Well, this is actually a 1960 style neck, which is thin. It's the 58, 59, those, those eras had the baseball bat necks that... Rhett likes to play I on. I like the very thin necks here. It's, it uh, fits my hand better. I think it's just more of a comfortable to play. Another thing to think about is fretboard wood. There's kind of a debate online as to whether or not fretboard wood has a difference in tone. I think it does. It definitely... It makes, feels different. Yes, it has a huge difference in feel. Both of these guitars have rosewood fretboards. A lot of times you'll see strats, though, with maple necks with maple boards. Maple fingerboards tend to be brighter in tone. They tend to be more snappy sounding. I'm not a huge fan of them, though, because they actually spray the lacquer that you get usually on the back of the neck. They spray the fingerboard as well and it feels different under your fingers. I like rosewood fingerboards. That's one of the things I like about Les Pauls, but if you buy a Les Paul Custom and it's an old one, you're gonna get an ebony fingerboard, which I actually like even more than the rosewood. Yeah, ebony's a little harder. It's a little denser wood than rosewood, so it, it feels a little bit smoother. You know, with rosewood, you can, you can feel the grain of the wood under your fingers. These are all minor details, but they do make a difference in how the guitar feels, which makes a difference in how you play the guitar. Next, we should talk about neck radius. Yeah, so 
When you're talking about radius, if you've been looking for a guitar and you've been reading specs and you see a 12 inch radius, nine and a half inch radius, you might be confused as to what that is. Essentially, what that's referring to is the radius of the fretboard. If you look closely at guitar frets, they're not totally flat. There's a curve to them. And the measurement of that curve is referred to as a radius. So if you think about a 12 inch wide circle, and I took a chunk out of that circle that's about as wide as this neck, that's the amount of curve that's in the fretboard. So, whereas if you had a 20 inch radius, like people like Alan Holdsworth like to play, uh, it's a very flat, almost like a classical guitar fingerboard. Right, there's almost no curve to them. Early Fenders, early, you know, late 50s Stratocasters and Telecasters have a very rounded fretboard radius. And so, uh, so the difference there is going to be in playability and feel. Generally, rounder radiuses are better for playing chords, especially lower down on the neck. But if you're going to be playing a lot of lead lines where you're bending, a rounder radius might not be what you're looking for. You want a flatter radius so that the note doesn't fret out as you bend up. People that play with really fast legato like Holdsworth or any players that play uh, with with where they're not picking every note and they're doing a lot of slurring, usually prefer to have these higher radiuses. So remember, the higher radius is actually flatter and easier to play on. Right. So a way to think about it, if you want to play super fast, go for a slim neck with a flat radius. Next, we have frets. Are they important, Rhett? Frets are super important um, in multiple ways. First of all is fret size. So physically how big the fret wire is and how far it sticks off and how far it sticks up from the fingerboard. I prefer jumbo frets. I do too. I feel like the same fret wire. In more modern guitars, you can actually get stainless steel frets, which I love because they don't wear out at all and they feel incredibly smooth. When you're bending. When you're bending, yeah. yeah. Or with your vibrato. And lastly, we have uses. Les Pauls, like we talked about earlier, have a lot more mid-range, especially with this pickup configuration with the PAF, and are really great for rock guitar, for really heavier rock guitar sounds. Right, that mid-range boost and the hotter output of the humbucking pickup, and the fact that the pickups are actually hum-canceling, hence the name of the humbucker. They don't hum like a Strat does, which makes them better for playing through overdriven, distorted amps, uh, whereas a Strat is going to buzz pretty loudly when you're playing one of the pickups individually. That's probably the worst part of owning a Strat. There are modern workarounds with that. You can get noiseless pickups, but stylistically, a Strat, I think, would be more versatile than a Les Paul. You can play rock on a Strat. You can play funk on a Strat. You can play modern pop stuff on a Strat. So my recommendation, if you want one guitar to do a little bit of everything, I think a Strat with a humbucker and the bridge would be a great option. Another thing to think about is the scale length of the guitar, which is the distance from the bridge to the nut. A Les Paul has a shorter scale length, which is 24 and 3 quarters inches, which means that you can't really get it perfectly in tune, especially on G and B string. Yeah, it's kind of... Uh... It's just traditional Les Paul stuff. You just deal with it. They're just never really in tune. Don't worry about it. Fenders have a longer scale length. They have 25 and a half inch scale length, which makes them more reliable. They stay in tune better. I think they feel a little bit better. There is a difference in feel between the shorter and longer scale length. Uh, also, another big difference between these two guitars, the Fender has a tremolo bridge where the Gibson has, has a, a stopped tailpiece, right. meaning no whammy bar here. Much easier to stay in tune, but you can't do dive bombs. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can find Rhett's channel as well there. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. You can get the Beato book on my website, rickbeato.com, and follow me on Instagram. And also, you can support my channel through the Beato Club, which you can find through flat5.com. You'll see the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.